It's all going down in Newcastle. You don't want to miss this one. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with a fucking arsehole. Is that what you call yourself? Fucking dickhead. <laughs> fucking knobhead. Well, never anybody. Everybody sits and sees it on social media, so we might as well go with it. Listen, I don't sit on social media. I think we've become good friends since I've known you, Steve. But, um, yeah, a little bit spicy in that press conference. It came from nowhere, from Franklin Ignatius. Um, he basically called you a plank of wood. You're stiff. You don't move a lot. So, where did that come from? But I think Anthony Joshua has been called the same, Joe Joyce has been called the same, Tyson Fury's being called the same, and look at where they are. Listen, you can call us what you want, you can try and build up a fight, you can say what you want, but when you've got somebody six foot seven coming and breathing down your neck and sitting on your chest and walking you down, let's see how much running you can do around that ring. You said, he, you said in the press conference there yourself that he, he, he does the 100 metres, he runs around that ring. I mean, you, you're heavyweights. You obviously, you, you, you can't catch each other. Do you think you can catch him in that ring and possibly stop him? Because you did speak about the stoppage in there. I will 100% stop Franklin Ignatius. That's, that's, that, that, that's inevitable because, you know, he, he, he may be able to run, but how long can he run for? And as I say, you know... It, there's only a matter of time before I cut you down and I work you out and I see where you're going and them shots will be coming. The windmills, as he says, but listen, the windmills have, have worked so far. I've, as I, I said it live on Sky, I'm not the best boxer. Never, never said I'm the best boxer. You know, I'm no Josh Kelly, I'm no Lomachenko, I'm no Usyk. I don't, I don't care. I am who I am. And, you know, every day is a learning day mm -hmm. in the gym and in the ring. And I'm enjoying the journey, no matter no matter what happens. Come Saturday night, we'll get another win and we'll move on. We'll talk about another win. Let's go back to that last fight against Nick Campbell. I mean, Nick, Nick was on a winning streak. He was on a knockout winning streak. You went in there. I think you lost your last fight there. Um, it looked like Nick was on the upper foot, but then you turned it around. I mean, if they don't, if they, it feels like if they don't get you out of there. If they don't get you out of there, you're going to turn it around and you're going to turn it on the, the tables around. That seems like what you do. So. With this Franklin Ignatius fight, do you believe that you can, if he is hard to catch, that you can catch him, similar to the way you've done with Nick Campbell? You know what? I, 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 as, as much as you, people can say I love Disney, and Rafiki says, you know, it, it, the, the past can hurt, but you've got to move on from it. I don't look at what, what, what happened with Nick Campbell. I hope Nick Campbell, all the best in the sport. He's a gentleman, similar to me. He took the fight on, he didn't need to take the fight on were pushed into it. I took the fight on, I didn't need to take the fight on. We both took the fight on, and I wish Nick all the best out of the sport, in the sport. He seems a very, very, you know, he seems a gentleman, and I hope the best for him. So I don't look at that, I don't talk about that, I don't sit and go, oh, like, all of that's irrelevant, you know. He lost, he come back, he got a win. Congratulations on him, this is my first fight after the back of that, that win. But I never look at a loss as a loss. Mm. And people have said, "Are you? Are you? Are you? Is this redemption because he beat you?" And get, I couldn't give a shit about that. It's not a loss. It's a learning mm. curve. Eight year ago, I walked in the gym fat to lose weight. If somebody said to me eight year later, "Are you going to be boxing again live on TV this time to zone?" I, I, you know, I would, I wouldn't even, couldn't even imagine where where I've come, where I started, and where I've come, and. You know, Everything, every day is a learning day, as I said. So, on Saturday night, it won't happen to the point where I'm losing on points and I need to catch him. And it, 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 what happens will happen. You know, we've learned a lot. I've had boxed in six months. I've been a long, tedious camp. I was meant to be fighting in April, meant to be fighting in May, meant to be fighting in June. Now we're in July. We're six months into the year. I've been in camp since February for the fight in April. There's been a lot of sparring, there's been a lot of learning, there's been a lot of pad work, and we'll see that on Saturday night. 
Well, obviously, obviously we talk about the heavyweight division, we always talk about the top dogs, the Tyson Furies, Joshua's, Usyk's and uh, Wilder's. But when we look at this domestic scene in the UK, we've got a good crop of fighters in amongst there. We always talk about the Fabio Wardleys, the Fraser Clarks, the Solomon Dakers. Um, we always talk about these guys and how it is a good crop of fighters, but we don't quite mention Steve Robinson in that bracket yet. I went against Frank Ignatius. Can we start mentioning Steve Robinson in amongst the Fabio Wardleys, the British title fights, the English title fights, and Solomon Dakers? Can we do that after I win on Saturday? Well, you go on box rec, and I'm ranked 11th in Britain. Like, you, you know, for, for those who aren't mentioning this, that, that's, that's down to them. I, I, like I say, people, people sit on social media, people sit on YouTube saying, ah, he's only ever going to be, he's only ever going to be in the British domestic scene, he's only, only ever going to win a British title and English title. Jesus, eight years ago when I walked in the gym and someone said to me, in eight years' time you're going to win a British title, I would have snapped the hands off. I, I walked into the gym to lose weight because I, I got told I'll never play football again. I was fat, I was depressed, I didn't know where I was going to go, no GCSEs, come from a background where I thought, fuck, it's either walk into a gym or become someone who I don't want to become and end up in prison, end up on, on the streets, end up doing what I don't want to do. So I went into a gym to t take up boxing, and I'm here now, a year later. So I really, really, really don't care if people don't put me in this order. I'll get these fights, because I've never bottled a fight, I've never pulled out a fight. We got off at Tony Yorker six weeks ago, I said, no problem. Canal Sports were the ones that pulled it over one one thing that was said in that in the only thing that was said was drug testing for we both leads up to the fight and funnily enough canal sports pulled pulled the fight I'm not going to say why that maybe happened but you know that was a fight we said yes to mm. I, I don't care who i'm fighting i think we're seeing that with my last fight i think we're seeing that with this fight fighting prospects fighting i'm a fighter I'm why I didn't argue with them. I'm going to sit and start going, oh, what, what, in front of cameras, in front of... I'm a kid that if you had beef with somebody in the street or in school, you went out, you fought them, you, you messaged each other on MSN or your Blackberry, you sorted a fight out, you went and you had a fight. That's it. I'm not going to sit and argue with someone over camera where I can't do nothing. I'll fight them in the ring on Saturday night and that's when I'll do me, you know, show what I'm capable of. I'm going to take a hard segue here now. You mentioned you throw big windmills. Now, another fighter that throws big windmills is Francis Ngannou. He's fighting Tyson Fury now as a boxing fan in the same division. When you look at Tyson Fury facing an MMA fighter, what's your thoughts? It runs through your head. Do you know what? It's, everyone sits and says, oh, the, the, the best fights aren't happening. The best. Uh, one, we had one thing that we mentioned to Tony Yoga, which pulled the fight. You can only imagine what it's like at the top. We want to be the first ring. We want the ring this size. We want the ring canvas this deep. We want this. We want that. Them gloves. That. Uh, you can't even imagine what it's like to get a contract signed. People think that. People will go on, well, Stephen should fight him, and people think that just gets done like that. Tyson should fight Usyk. People think that's just a contract gets signed, you send it, and you fight. It's not as easy as that. And it's not as easy as that now. So God knows what it's like at the top of the game. So, listen, Engano's got one of the hardest punches ever. It's, it's, you know, it's been proven. He catches Tyson once. We've seen it, well, Conor, Conor McGregor got absolutely slated for fighting Mayweather. Mayweather, probably one of the greatest boxers we'll ever see. You know, defensive counter puncher. And he, he, he made a good stand of himself, caught him a few times, didn't do too bad, so ngano has got a puncher's chance and, you know, wh whatever the rules are, whatever, it's again, it's a bit like misfits, it's bringing in people who probably wouldn't normally watch boxing so, for me it's bringing in new people, it's bringing people in, uh, do, do people want to see, do people want to see the Usyk fight or the Joshua fight? Of course we do we're, we're boxing fans, but it's not as easy is people make out on social media to be made. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not. It really isn't that easy. Stay so back to you then. Obviously, you're back in the northeast, back in your home area. <laughs> um, you're up against Franklin Macius, who had a good win last time out against Jose Burton. Like I said, this domestic scene and the heavyweight scene is, is booming right now, and it'd be good to see you up there. So, what can we expect? What kind of performance can we expect from the big man yourself on Saturday night? I just make sure that you know I'm. I'm the most laid-back person you'll ever come across, and I've had to, I've had to do that with with the the madness of the ADHD and the the crazy 
personality over the next, last few years. I've had to sort of take and, you know, come, come Saturday night, I may start slow, as I did with everyone else, but how long can he run around that ring for when I'm hurrying windmills? How long can he stay away from the six foot seven man hurrying big long arms at your chin, at your head, at your body? I think the stoppage will come before the fourth. If it doesn't come before the fourth, it'll happen in the fifth or the sixth. Steve, listen, like I said, good luck to you, big man. Always a pleasure to see you, mate, and uh, no doubt I'll see you at the way in tomorrow. So good luck, mate. See you soon. Cheers, Steve. Thank you very much. It's all going down in Newcastle. You don't want to miss this one. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up. You dress up and you fucking show up.